Getting angry is uh, not as nice as this, as this peace. Huh? You prefer that peace or this happiness. Until this point, then it's easy to say change. If not, uh, whatever you say is theory, <laughs> just theory. Huh? So uh, it's up to an individual to practice and experience it for themselves. So again, it's consistent effort, consistent effort, and uh, I would say moment to moment consistent effort. Uh, if not, the mind will just go back to square one. I tell you, you have to do loving kindness, then okay, you wish all beings are happy, one second only, and go back to square one. So it requires uh, lots of work, actually. Yeah, lots of work. Yeah, so if somebody done wrong, there are also other practices such as uh, forgiveness. Forgiveness. Um, um, so loving kindness is one thing, forgiveness, that's another aspect to kind of like uh, change the perception, change the perception. Yeah, so it's very important. And of course, there are lots of teachings. Uh, I don't want to go into detail because uh, it can be very technical. Huh? Okay, right. Thank you, so hopefully that's the, something more practical to take away. I mean, it's every moment, yeah? just keep uh, practicing first. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? I have a quick question, mm. uh, Venerable. So, uh, could you kindly perhaps clarify on how we can not have attachments to our goals and aspirations <clears throat> after setting uh, the causes and conditions for yeah. it? Yeah, very good question. Eh? Because uh, <clears throat> attachment is like more or less we surely have, unless you're enlightened or something. Eh? So we'll have, <laughs> we'll have attachment. Um, yeah, so if the, if the aspiration or the goal setting is very good and you work towards it, sometimes things don't turn out the way it uh, wants to appear. Eh? You have obstacles. What's the next step? How to achieve this? Uh, so if you have a lot of attachment, you face this thing called burnout. But I have to give up already. La. No. Brings a lot of suffering, a lot of stress. A lot of suffering, a lot of stress. So you need to moderate. You need to moderate. And so first, um, not easy. Uh, first, you need to have certain right view or right wisdom. Yeah, it requires a lot of training on uh, this impermanence. Impermanence. And this state of detachment is also a kind of emotion, a state of mind. Yeah, so only when a person has reached, we call this equanimity. When they are detached, they have, they, you know, they're just at peace, equanimous. Then they're not easily shaken by gain or loss, praise or blame, fame or defame, pleasure and pain. The vicissitudes of life, ups and downs of life, all the dramas. So it's not easy. Yeah? So, um, <clears throat> when we sort of pursue something or even when we reach something, uh, sometimes we get, might get too carried away. I think Ajahn Brahm have given a lot of examples on this, uh, the story of Su Tong Po, right? the poet who write the, the poem that won't get shaken by the four winds, I won't tell that. So this one is more probably like daily kind of Buddhist community example, for example, like meditation classes or meditation retreat. Some people say, okay, I go for a retreat, everything very calm, no work or little or no work to do, so very peaceful. So they think they have equanimity, okay, very calm, very peaceful. So once they go back home, all the work start to pile up, <laughs> pile up, and have all the deadlines coming to them, no more equanimity, all gone. Equanimity down the drain. Eh? So that's not the real kind of equanimity. So need time to build. Yeah, need time to build. So um, again, it's an um, important question. Uh, it's, it's, as good as, it's as good as asking how to overcome suffering. Yeah, no attachment means no suffering. Right? Yeah, so this is a, a long journey <laughs> for noble truth, noble eightfold path. It's a long journey. So there's no like one quick answer to it. Thank you very much, okay. Venerable. No problem. Yeah. Any other questions from the floor? Mm. 
Okay. Uh, Bante, All right. a simple question since tonight mm. is an aspiration night. Mm. How can we make, ensure that our aspiration uh, have a high chance to come true? Ah, okay. There is this uh, <clears throat> immediate effect kind of karma, immediate effect kind of karma, which is very in line with uh, you know, what we chant or what we chanted earlier, the qualities of the Dhamma to be seen here and now without delay. Yeah, you know, some people say, my aspiration like, cannot come true, la, la, you know, delay. Uh, anyway, just a quick show of hands. How many of you consider yourselves to be Theravada Buddhists? Okay, uh, any Mahayana Buddhists? Nobody? How about uh, Vajrayana practitioners? Okay, we have a few. Okay, <coughs> so this is just a joke, la. joke for... Um, between the Theravada and the Mahayana practitioners. So I normally say uh, Theravada Buddhists are Kyasi Buddhists because they are afraid to die, right? Kyasi, afraid to die. They don't want to die so many times. They don't want to quickly get liberated. Yeah? They don't want to die so many times. And uh, Mahayana practitioners are Kyasu Buddhists. Kyasu Buddhists. They want to have, uh, you know, become Buddha, become perfect, everything perfect. So they must, uh, sometimes you cannot reach perfection in one lifetime, huh? so you must go through many, many lifetimes. Uh, so this is the difference. So if you want to make aspiration and sort of like see it here and now, like uh, talk about high success rate, <clears throat> so one is to repeat a kind of right reflection. So one of the things I recommend is to sort of like repeat this mantra, may all beings be well and happy. So immediate one, so you, you repeat really, it's a wish for no, everyone to be well, to be happy. So immediately there's a emotional change, emotional change, emotional change. Like for example, those who uh, <clears throat> go temple and pai pai on, eh? they also have some kind of loving kindness but it's not really the kind of broad spectrum kind of loving kindness so they just wish for themselves or wish for their family to be safe to be you know successful that kind of thing right so it's a different emotion so you can try that so you wish for yourself wish for a family you have a certain emotion then you once you get an emotion, then you kind of compare with wishing all beings well and happy. See what's the difference. Yeah, so it's immediate, can be seen here and now. Yeah? So that is intentionally creating good karma. <clears throat> because if we do not intentionally create, what will happen if we just let the mind loose? We let the mind loose. We just kind of uh, let it drift by itself. Then what will happen is you do your short experiment. Now you do a short experiment in your mind. If any unwholesome thought appear, then you raise your left hand, imaginary left hand. You don't have to raise and show everybody. You know your paisa. Huh? Uh, so imaginary left hand. Unwholesome thoughts means anything that promote greed or anger. And you inside the mind you raise your left hand. If any thought that promotes wholesome state of mind, then you raise your inside the right hand. Huh? So you can do this experiment. That means do not deliberately think of any topic. Do not deliberately think of any incident. Just let the mind relax, just like daydream. Huh? Daydream. Then see what happens. If your unwholesome thought is more then you really need to do something about it really need to do something about your mind if your wholesome thought is more and then continue to keep it up huh? keep up the good work and continue to improve all right so this is the i would say more or less the immediate kind of achievable goals achievable goals don't uh, aim something too far something not reachable, then uh, you have lots of this stress and suffering. Okay, all right. Th 
Thank you very much, okay. Venerable. Yeah, I think we have time for, because uh, the talk will be until 9. Ah, so does okay. anyone else have any questions? From the back also can, I'll bring the mic to you. I have a question, Venerable. Okay. So how do we not get too attached to our karmic wealth? In the sense that like, you know, um, sometimes I find myself being a bit too kiasu about my karma. Mm. Like, whenever, you know, I do something bad or something like that, there tend to be a lot of like regret and remorse because mm. it's bad karma. I've done, I mean, I've done bad karma, but then regret and remorse is also a bad karma. But yeah. how do we shift away from that tendency to just mm. acceptance and a quick turnaround? Mm, okay, so it's very similar to maybe your previous question. Um, yeah, so one of the reflections of um, we have the four sublime states huh? loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. So, in order to practice and sort of achieve equanimity, our sort of traditional chanting is to reflect on karma. So a lot of times people will end up speculating what they've done in the past. Why I'm in this state now? Probably in the past I must have done something wrong or done something right. So end up becomes speculation. Speculation and guesswork and daydreaming. Yeah, so end up this is actually considered restlessness and worry. Restless and worry. So instead of meditating, end up restlessness and worry. So that's not the real meditation. So the real Kind of reflection on karma to achieve inner peace is basically every moment whatever sensation you experience right now be it pleasant unpleasant or neutral mentally you label this is karma's ripening i mean this here and now evidence here and now evidence. you don't have to guess in the past or done. don't don't guess so right now if you sit down too long backside pain okay karma's ripening yeah got back pain, karma's ripening. You feel happy, you laugh, okay, karma's ripening. So every moment, karma ripening, karma ripening. So you keep repeating that until the mind will be at peace with karma, be one and peace with karma. Yeah, so then you more or less get some taste of this equanimity. So it's every moment. So it's not just a few seconds. I give an example of like, uh, you know, ancient cavemen, how they start a fire. Maybe they take a, two dry sticks and they rub and rub and rub until you got smoke and fire come out. So it's something like that. You need to keep doing until the symptoms appear. You're not like rub once, then you can't get anything. You need to keep repeating. Huh? Yeah, so it's uh, mental repetition. And while we are repeating um, and acknowledging, like this is my Kama Vipaka, mm. Kama is ripening, that would be a, a wholesome mental state of maybe wisdom or... Yeah, um, yeah, because karma in terms of like transcendental uh, way of, uh, how do you call it, producing karma, uh, the Buddha mentioned about the four noble truths, four noble truths. So the first noble truth, karma, suffering, is basically old karma, old karma. Whatever you experience now, whatever you see, hear, smell, think, taste and touch, anything nice, not nice, painful, whatever it is, that's old karma, that's suffering old karmas like right now you have, you can't choose or you feel painful <laughs> you can't choose it's not your choice and these old karmas right today yeah so this is the first noble truth second noble truth new karma that means we intentionally react i uh, feel painful then you get agitated or you get angry get averse you want to get rid of it so that is creating new karmas creating new karmas so in a way, um, <clears throat> when we think of this uh, positive karma, that's later. Okay. So the third noble truth, karma can be seized, karma can be overcome. And the fourth noble truth is the noble eightfold path. So in this current reflection, when we reflect on karma, that's part of right thought, but right thought. And if we keep repeating, that's right effort right effort so it's not just speculation no? so the evidence the sensations you feel the feelings you feel 
That's part of right mindfulness. Yeah, right mindfulness. And if let's say the more you do, the more you reflect, how come the more I meditate, the more stressful? Huh? Uh, that means something is wrong. We call this uh, wrong view. If a person, the more they meditate, they understand the Four Noble Truth, they're able to let go of this craving, they feel more peaceful, more calm, that means you're on the right path. That's part of right view. Huh? Okay? It's just the uh, gist of it. Thank you very much, Venerable. Okay, no problem. Maybe one last call, if anyone has any questions for Venerable. Okay, one in the back. Okay, one last question. Uh, hello. Uh, why must we not have attachment when attachment is not entirely bad? It's something that gives us benefits. Like for example, if let's say I'm attached to good grades, it will give me motivation to study. So why must mm. we like not have attachment when it's also, it also provides us benefits? Okay, yeah, so there are many kinds of uh, push factors. There are many kinds of push factors. So, uh, like maybe for your case, if you uh, want <coughs> uh, this kind of achievement, uh, I won't say it's totally right or wrong because everybody has a different phase of development, different phase of development. I'm not sure, have you heard of this uh, Maslow's hierarchy of these needs and wants? Yeah, so some people may aim for just basic survival needs. They just need a roof over their head, they just need food to eat. So that's the most important thing. So whatever do, they need this to survive. So that is their main motivation. It's not about uh, achieving any success or whatever. It's just, they just want survival. So some people is, just want this. So you can't... Uh, like force these people, hey, you must know Dhamma. <laughs> no, this, is, uh, this is important to them no? at that particular phase, so uh, they need to pursue that. And above that, you have the, I would say more like <clears throat> maybe peer pressure, I mean peer support, you need friends, emotional kind of, um, kind of need emotional needs, so some people need peers, some people need acknowledgement from others. So again, um, some certain level of growth, you will need that or you might need that. You need uh, a pra praise from maybe your parents or your teachers so that you're motivated to do well. Huh? So without that, then you won't do well. So that's another level. Another level is success. You, know, you want to be a high achiever, get top scores, uh, that kind of thing. So that is achievement. So you need achievement to feel good. Right? That's a motive, incentive for you to, to work harder. Right? So that's uh, another kind of phase. And sometimes um, there's something higher. Because in life, you may not get everything you want all the time. Yeah? Um, maybe a, hard, a bit hard for you to understand, but uh, uh, that's the way it is. Huh? So maybe COVID happened or some economic crisis happened, whatever happened. So people, maybe their businesses go bust because of COVID. They can't do a lot of things. So things will suddenly change. So it's good to learn a certain skill now, like let's say uh, reflecting on equanimity or sometimes finding new kinds of motivation. Doesn't have to be just achievement, finding new motivations, for example, something maybe more selfless, like whatever I do, whatever I study is for the benefit of everybody, example. Yeah? So that could be maybe one kind of motive or uh, you think of uh, something more noble, yeah? doesn't restrict to just your success. Yeah? If it's just your success, then if uh, things don't go well, then uh, you get shaken a lot. But if it's for everybody and uh, things don't go well, and <laughs> that's power of nature because whatever sort of uh, the karmic kind of world cycle plans, it's meant for everybody. Yeah, so you're kind of like at peace with this uh, kind of result. Okay, so uh, <laughs> hope you can digest. Yeah. 
Thank you very much for your wise words, okay. uh, Prago. So now, uh, brothers and sisters, let us express our gratitude to Prago for the Dhamma teachings by saying sadhu three times together. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Well, very good evening, everyone. And we will be doing some meta meditation. I think we are just approaching a new year. Coming soon, next change. Uh, let us uh, go into the new year with, uh, by learning how to shape what is inside us. Very often the things outside us is not possible for us to change, especially there are forces beyond us. But what is within ourselves is pretty much under our control. And um, one of the ways in order to bring balance and happiness is our mind is to practice loving-kindness meditation. Very often when we do uh, loving-kindness, we, we do metta, we send loving-kindness to others. And people wonder whether there's any effect or not when you send loving-kindness to others. Do other people respond to our loving-kindness? But as you do, the most important thing is that you make a change within yourself. Because the sheer act of making wishes of love and kindness itself will bring some kind of transformation within ourselves. So first work with ourselves first. And when we begin to do metta in a more consistent manner, you actually begin to experience changes occurring within your heart and mind. I see that happening within myself and those people who have been following metta also see changes within themselves. I think that's the most important thing. Are you able to find balance and happiness and peace within your own mind? And one way is to generate thoughts of loving kindness because loving kindness is a wholesome uh, mental uh, force that when you begin to generate, it brings changes to yourself. But it is also possible after we are doing meditation for a while that you can actually influence situations outside. And um, just very quickly, I've just returned from a pilgrimage, leading a two weeks pilgrimage in India. And at Bud Gaya, where the Buddha gained enlightenment, there is a Bodhi tree growing there. So we go there in the evening to do meditation and one, uh, one thing which occurred to me was very interesting because we were there for like three nights. So the first night when I was sitting down meditating, there were so many activities, hundreds of people moving around at the Mahabodhi area. And if you want to do Anapanasati, watch your breath, that's not so easy <laughs> because there's so many distractions. So I decided to do Metta, Loving Kindness Meditation. So while doing metta meditation, I didn't realize that at the back of me was a dog. And the dog was actually very happily sitting behind as I was doing meditation. I didn't know that. And then the dog started barking. And when I opened my eyes, apparently there was another dog that was approaching my direction. So this dog was very protective of the spot behind me. <laughs> and so he's barking. So I said, shh. And after that, uh, the other dog went away. And this dog was still not happy. From time to time, we go, rrr, rrr. it's like, how dare you ever dream of coming to this spot, something like that. <laughs> the next night when I went for meditation, I just sat down and meditated. At the same dog, actually, there were hundreds of people that started walking beside me. And he uh, lay in front of me with one paw on my leg. <laughs> and then the head was very close to my knee. All right. And uh, later on at the meditation progress, I find that when you have a candidate like that, someone that you can send meditation to, actually the matter also become better, actually. It's a name of matter. And then 20 minutes before we leave the, the temple that is closed at 9 o'clock, uh, they would blow the whistle. And the dog knows that it's time for us to stand up, right? So I was like preparing to, to get up and the dog just came and hugged me. Have you imagined the dog coming hugging you and after when it went away, my sweater had some dog hair. <laughs> which was interesting. And then the next morning before we go off, we went very early in the morning, uh, before we go off to the airport and all that, we, we had a puja and meditation. So the meditation and the dog also came straight to me and was just lying in front, you know, sitting. So it was amazing, you know, just when you're sending loving kindness meditation, somehow hundreds of people there, but the dogs do get some kind of attraction to a person practicing metta. This is only to say that as you do metta, you change what is inside you and you can also influence external activity. And sometimes dogs do have a sense of who is doing metta at Vukkaya. So we will do some a metta meditation. So you can sit down very quietly, peacefully. 
You just be aware of your breathing in and breathing out. Connect yourself with your breath. Uh, we will do a quick span, uh, scan of our body. If you can just put your attention at the top of your head, that's called the crown. Can you put a smile in your crown at the top of your head? A smile is connected with kindness, with friendliness, with relaxation, with happiness. Can you now be aware of your forehead? Can you feel the sensations in your forehead? Can you put a smile on your forehead? And your forehead is not smiling. And just be aware of the spot between your eyebrows. Can you put a smile at this spot? Just be aware of your eyes, putting a smile in your eyes. And now to your face, a smile on your face. And your neck, your throat, put a smile on your throat. At the base of your throat is called the thyroid gland. Can you put a smile on your thyroid gland? May the thyroid gland be healthy, keeps you healthy as well. And moving lower down to your heart, to your beating heart. Put a smile in your heart. Is your heart smiling now? In your lungs, Put a smile in your lungs. A smile for your solar plexus. And the organs that are connected to your solar plexus, like your liver, which is on the right side of the body, just below the ribs. Put a smile on your liver. And to the back, your two kidneys, a smile for your kidneys. May the kidneys be healthy. And to your left side, your spleen, just below the ribs and your pancreas. Below your spleen will be your pancreas. Pancreas is also lying against your stomach into your digestive system, your stomach and intestines. Smile. And to your urinary system. We will first send loving kindness to ourselves. Just make a wish. May my heart be peaceful and free. May my heart be peaceful and free. May I be well and happy. May my heart be peaceful and free. May I be well and happy. Putting a smile in your heart, relaxing. As you say these words, it is as if you're listening to these words from inside. May my heart be peaceful and free. May I be well and happy. And warm yourself up with a smile in your heart, filling yourself with love and kindness. Are you filling yourself now up with love and kindness? New Year's Eve, let us think about the people who have given so much to us. We have derived so much benefit from them. 
from their love, from their kindness, their sacrifice, their loving thoughts for us. And here we can think of our parents and our teachers and maybe good friends who look after you very well. Now let us send our thoughts of loving kindness to this first group of people. You can either send your loving kindness to them as a group or individually. For instance, if you are sending loving kindness to your mother, just imagine that your mother is seated just in front of you. If you would only stretch your hand, you would be able to touch your mother. And she's in a very good mood, she's smiling. And you speak to her from your heart. You say, Mother, may your heart be peaceful and free. May you be well and happy. And think about the kindness of your mother, the sacrifices she has made for you, regardless of whether she's still here in this world or she has moved to another world. Think of her kindness and you send this love and kindness to her wherever she is. May she be well and happy. Also thinking about your father, who have worked so hard to sacrifice for the whole family so that the whole family will have food on the table, a roof above their heads, clothes on their body, given education, all this thinking, what they can do, what he can do in order that we have, we have provided with all the means to become what we are now. Let us think of the kindness of our father whether he's still here or he has moved on and say, Father, wherever you are, may you be well and happy. And send a happy thought and happy wish for your father. And how about your teachers? How much of our knowledge are gained from our teachers? especially our religious teachers, our spiritual teachers who have encouraged us to walk along the path of Dhamma. Wherever our teachers may be, just open up our hearts with love and kindness and say, My teachers, may your heart be peaceful and free. May you be well and happy. May you be healthy as well. Now let us send our thoughts of loving kindness to people at home, your immediate family members. If you're married and your spouse, you have children, sending your loving thoughts to your children. If you have grandchildren, send your loving thoughts, loving wishes for your grandchildren. But if you don't have a family of your own, you can only send loving kindness to your brothers and sisters and to your nephews and nieces. You can send loving kindness to them one by one or in a group. You say, May your heart be peaceful and free. May you be well and happy. Having a smile in your heart, you're just giving good wishes, wishes of kindness and love to all your immediate family members. And now let us send 11 thoughts for the country, Malaysia, where we are. Uh, wishes that may this country be peaceful, be successful. May the country have harmony. May we all prosper in this coming new year. Let us make wishes of love and kindness for all who live in this country, Malaysians and non-Malaysians regardless of race, regardless of religion, may they be well and happy. May the Malaysians live in harmony with one another 
with kindness, with compassion. May they practice good, noble qualities in their life. And may the Buddha Dharma flourish in this country of ours. May we be blessed with good teachers that inspire us along the path of Dharma. And loving thoughts for the whole world. May this world become peaceful and progressive. Areas that are faced with war, with tension, where people live in fear. May peace be restored quickly to this world. Sending our loving thoughts to all. May all beings in this world, may they be well and happy. May this coming year that we go, as soon as we are going to experience the new year, may this be a new year for us to make good progress in the cultivation of our own qualities. If you are faced with obstacle, may we overcome the obstacle and may we make good progress in the Buddha Dharma. Sharing the merits with all spiritual beings, with our higher plane teachers and with our departed ones. Merits for the devas, for all beings. May suffering ones be suffering free and if fear struck, fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share in this marriage that we have generated. May this marriage help to bring them good health, happiness, and peace. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power, to share in this marriage of ours, and may they long protect the Buddha Sasana. Let us say Satu. Satu. Satu.